What's going on guys, Justin here and welcome back to our 10th example video following our course on proofwriting. Now today's example video is going to be on the method of direct proof as well as proof by contrapositive. So let's go ahead and get into our first proof here. So we have here, suppose that x and y are integers and we want to show that if x plus y is even then x squared plus y squared is even. So let's begin by writing down our definition of what it means for a number to be even. So if x plus y is even, then x plus y can be written as 2 times a for some integer a. Great. So from here, we're going to write x squared plus y squared in the following way. We're going to write x squared plus y squared as the quantity x plus y squared minus 2xy. Next, we're going to make this substitution here for our x plus y. So then this will equal 2a quantity squared minus 2xy. And from here we're going to go ahead and square our 2a. So we'll get 4a squared minus 2xy. And we'll see that if we just factor out a 2 here, we'll have 2 times 2a squared minus xy. And since we have 2 times some stuff, this number is most definitely even, which completes our proof. So let's go ahead and get into our next example. So this problem we want to show that if 4 to the n minus 1 is prime, then n is odd. Now for this example we are going to be using the proof by contrapositive. So let's begin by supposing that n is even. And just like we did for the last problem, that means we can write n in the form 2 times a for some integer a. So let's go ahead and make that substitution into our original. And remember, because we're doing a proof by contrapositive, we're going to want to demonstrate that 4 to the n minus 1 will be composite. So that'll give us 4 to the 2a minus 1. And we can see that we can actually factor this into 4 to the a minus 1 times 4 to the a plus 1, which is obviously composite. So that completes this proof. So let's get into the next example. Great, so for this problem, we're going to want to suppose we have some real number x, and we want to see and we want to show that if x squared plus 4x plus 1 is less than 0, then x is less than 0. So we're going to do this by contrapositive. So let's suppose x is greater than or equal to 0. We're going to try to show that x squared plus 4x plus 1 is also greater than or equal to 0. So let's go ahead and split this up into two cases. The first case where x is equal to 0 and the second case for all cases where x is greater than 0. So let's go ahead and consider when x is equal to 0. And we'll go ahead and plug that into our quadratic here. So we'll have 0 squared plus 0 plus 1 which is obviously greater than or equal to 0. So we are good on our 0 case. Now we want to consider when x is strictly bigger than 0. And so to deal with all cases where x is greater than 0, we're going to want to note that x squared plus 4x plus 1 is strictly increasing. And because we are on the interval where x is greater than 0, we have a minimum at x equals 0. Thus we can easily say that x squared plus 4x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x greater than or equal to 0. Great, so that finishes this problem off, so let's get into the next one. So this problem says suppose a, b, and c are integers and we want to show that if a divides b and b divides c that a divides c. So we're going to be using the definition of divisibility here. So let's go ahead and suppose our two starting conditions here. We're going to be using the method of direct proof. So suppose that A divides B. Well, that means we can write B as a combination of A and some other integer. So let's go ahead and choose N. So that means we can write B as A times N with N just being some integer. And if B divides C, we can write out a similar equation so we will have that c is equal to b times m, where m is some integer. And we want to show that a divides c, so let's go ahead and make a substitution into our definition of c right here using this above definition for b. So that means we can write c as a times n times m, 
And of course, that implies that A divides C, as we can write C as a multiple of A. Great, so that finishes this problem off, and let's do another one. So this one is going to be similar to the last one. We have A, B, and C that are integers, and we have that A is congruent to B mod N, B is congruent to C mod N, and we want to show that A is congruent to C mod N. Now, just like the last time, we are just going to need to use our definition of what it means to be congruent to B mod N and C mod N. So let's go ahead and write that out. So suppose A is congruent to B mod N. Well, that means that we can write A as a multiple of N plus B with K being an integer. And similarly for B being congruent to C mod N, so we'll have B is congruent to C mod N. That means that B is equal to some multiple of N plus C, where H is also an integer. And just like the last problem, we are going to be making a substitution to prove our conclusion here. So let's go ahead and substitute our definition of B down here into our A up here. So that'll give us A is equal to K times N plus this whole thing here, H times N plus C. And we can rewrite this right hand side as follows where we have K plus H times N plus C. And you can see that we have a multiple of N here plus C, which is our definition of what it means for A to be congruent to C mod N. Great. So let's go ahead and do another one. So for this one, we have suppose that A and B are integers. If A times the quantity B squared plus five is even, then A is even or B is odd. So we're gonna be doing this one by contrapositive. So the way you negate A is even or B is odd is that we have not A and not B. So we're gonna go ahead and suppose that A is odd and B is even. Great, so if A is odd, we can write it in the form 2N plus one for some integer N. And similarly, if B is even, we can write it as two times M for some integer M. Great, so let's go ahead and substitute these in into our statement right here, and we're gonna try and show that that is odd. So for our A, we will have 2N plus one, and we're gonna multiply that into 2M squared plus five. And once we multiply that out, we'll get this. We'll get 8m squared n plus 10n plus 4m squared plus 5. And we can rewrite that as follows. We'll split up this 5 into a 4 uh, plus 1. And we will factor out a 2 to show that this is odd. We'll have 4m squared plus 4m squared n plus 5n plus 2m squared plus 2 plus 1 we can see that that is of the proper form to prove that this is odd, which finishes this one off. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. All right, so for this problem, we want to show that every entry in the two to the k minus one row of, of Pascal's triangle is odd. So to begin, let me go ahead and write out how we would derive the entries for the nth row of Pascal's triangle, and then we'll get into it. So let's recall that the entries in the nth row of Pascal's triangle correspond to the coefficients of x plus y quantity to the nth power as follows. We have n choose zero times x to the n. Then we have a decreasing power for x and an increasing power of y as we increase this piece here from one to n. So our second element will be n choose one times x to the n minus one plus y all the way up to n choose n minus one times x times y to the n minus one plus n choose n times y to the n. Now in this case, our n is equal to two to the k minus one. So we want to show, so in this case we want to show that n to the k minus one choose h is odd for all h less than or equal to two to the k minus one. So to begin, let's rewrite this a little bit. So we can rewrite this as two to the k minus one times two to the k minus two, all the way down to two to the k minus h. And that's all going to be over h factorial. 
Next, we're gonna note that we can factor each element in the numerator as follows. So for our first entry in the numerator, we can leave it as is, as two to the k minus one will be odd as it is just one less than a power of two. But we can factor two to the k minus two as follows. We can take out a two, so we'll have two times, then we'll have two to the k minus two minus one, and this will be a power of two times an odd number. And we will factor the rest of the numerator to get these powers of two times an odd number, splitting into odds and powers of two. Next, we are going to want to note that for, for all m from one to h, that the factorization of two to the k minus m in the numerator will contain the same powers of two that contain m in the denominator. So let me show you what I mean by that. So there I went ahead and wrote that out so that the factorization of 2 to the k minus m in the numerator contains the same powers of 2 that contains m in the denominator. So to prove this, let me go ahead and suppose that m is equal to 2 to the t times c with c being some odd number as we need from our setup. Then we can write 2 to the k minus m but using this substitution here. So that's going to equal two to the k minus two to the t times c, which we can factor as follows. That's gonna equal two to the t times two to the k minus t minus c. Great. So from this we can draw the conclusion that if two to the t divides m, then two to the t divides two to the k minus m and we have proved the cancellation throughout this entire product there in the numerator and denominator. So we can simplify our fraction. And once we do, we will leave an odd number for every k. Great, so that finishes our last problem off and that's a good place to stop.